Kenesha L. Davey, the Associate Director at the DC Creative Affairs Office. Welcome to our Care for Creatives Community Conversation featuring Dr. Mary DeRate and China Tierra discussing the benefits of sound healing. After watching this episode, head over to creativeaffairsdc.com to learn more about our Care for Creatives program. Through our partnership with the George Washington University, we are able to provide pay what you can mental health services for all local creatives. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mary DeRate, and I'd like to welcome you to another Care for Creatives community conversation. I am really excited about this conversation today because we're going to talk about sound healing and sound therapy. And I think this is such an amazing topic. And I'm really excited to be talking to China today about this. I have actually been present when she has done some um, sound healing and just find it to be a really important direction that therapy is going. So China, it's really good to see you. And I'm wondering if you could introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about you. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Mary. I appreciate it. Good to see you again as well. Um, let's see. Um, my name is China Tierra. Um, my tribe likes to call me the village auntie mama. Um, <laughs> I am a poet. I am a songstress. I am a sound healer, future LPC um, and CEO of Preserving Peace LLC, which is a initiative that creates safe and transformative spaces using holistic practitioners doing sound healing and holistic wellness and focusing on the mind, body, and soul. So yeah, that is just a little bit about me. And um, Dr. Mary, you know, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and explain a little bit about the Care for Creatives program. Thank you. Uh, for those of you that are tuning into this, maybe for the first time and don't know about the Care for Creatives program, um, it is the a partnership between George Washington University and the Creative Affairs Office that offers pay what you can therapy to creatives and entrepreneurs in the city of DC. Um, it also has these community conversations where we talk about important mental health topics and issues uh, and offer some education to people who are potentially thinking maybe about getting into therapy or um, just in need of a little self-help. Um, so I am Dr. Mary DeRate. I am the uh, Director of School Counseling for the George Washington University's uh, Counseling Department and a faculty member there. I also practice as uh, a clinician at DeRate Clinical Services um, here in DC. So why don't we get started and maybe China, you could start by telling people a little bit about what sound healing is and what we're what we're kind of talking about today. Um, so sound bath or sound healing would potentially what it looks like. It allows you to connect with yourself emotionally and energetically using different sound instruments. I personally use um, crystal sound bowls, tongue drums, different chimes, different bowls. I would love to have a gong one day because they're super um, <laughs> massive in that space, but it also is like, I like to call a deep body listening experience, super immersive, like your whole entire body. From the, some of the research that they've been able to prove is that it connects to the theta and the beta wave within our brains. So it allows us to consciously connect in this deep meditative state. There's no bathing suits needed um, for sound baths. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been asked that a few different times. People are like, a sound bath? Uh, but no, there's no bathing suits needed, but definitely an open mind um, and allowing yourself to be comfortable or uncomfortable um, and to listen. So that's what, um, you know, the process of sound healing and what it looks like. Yeah, that's really exciting. I think I love that you mentioned, I'm kind of a neuroscience geek, and I love that you mentioned the beta waves and the different frequencies that the research is showing have this impact, just have an impact on the brain and change our thinking patterns, change our emotional status. Um, it, it's really kind of an amazing thing. Um, 
I am wondering, this is such a unique approach and it's only in the, I could get this wrong, but it's been being practiced for centuries. It has. But, yes. And we, well, only in the last, maybe, I don't know how many years do you think it's really kind of risen to a little bit more of a prominence? I think definitely in the Western, like, and you know, over here, I think it's been like, mm, maybe within a past maybe like decade or something um but I think maybe within the, I honestly for me personally I've seen it be more prominent just maybe within the past five years but I know that like if we're talking about like Native American or like African culture like drumming and mm-hmm. the the hand clapping and the singing like all of that is a part of sound healing and I think it was just never really a name or maybe something that we couldn't really put a language to yeah. yeah, that's really, that's a really cool idea. This idea that it's the sound has been affecting us and, and incorporated into religious and spiritual and just healing ceremonies for, I think, pretty much as long as humans have existed. Is, yeah. <laughs> so how did you kind of, I, I know you said you're training to, for L, to be an LPC, but how did you get involved? What has your journey been to bring you kind of to this place where you are a practicing sound healer and becoming um a licensed professional counselor? Okay, um, well, I'll answer that in two parts. So for the therapeutic part of it, which I would say um, the licensed um, therapist part, um, I really don't even know. Therapy kind of found me. Honestly, I feel like I went to go get my master's in counseling and the idea that I had for it was just more so along the lines of I, when I was younger, my mom was like a single mom, you know, for a long time when I was a kid. And we went to like a lot of like boys and girls clubs and different community um, outreach centers and everything like that. Um, And I saw how important it was for the families that did not have a second parent at home or just somewhere for their kids to go after school. So a part of what I wanted to do with therapy was incorporate that in those community centers, because I know how important that is for the whole family as a unit on a holistic element. And I wanted to be able to bring that to the community centers um, and all different kinds of programs, just like, you know, parent teaching and nutrition healing and, you know, just all those things. So that was my mind said, you know, when I first went into, you know, counseling. And then also it was for me, like going through, you know, going through the program, I went back to therapy, um, you know, and um, yeah, so I, I worked in the community uh, for a long time before I decided that I wanted to be a therapist. So I did like some intensive in home and mental health skill building and crisis stabilization. Um, I worked with kids who had autism. So I just really kind of went around, you know, I feel like within the mental health field and just kind of trying to find my niche. Um, And then eventually I got into a more so of a mindful practice. Um, So one of my girlfriends and I went to a uh, African drumming class. So we went to African drum class and it was a dance class. And, you know, I felt so uncomfortable there because I had never moved my body in such a way or seen the way that the drums could actually ignite you know, um, a feeling within you, just like the spiritual connection. Um, and so I kind of wanted to, I started to explore more and do a little bit more research to see what that looked like for myself and within my own culture. Um, and then I also, I travel a lot. I love traveling. Um, and I went to Amsterdam okay. and um, there was a gentleman on the street and he had this big type of pole. It had to be like at least 30 inches. And um, he was just playing it. And I like literally felt drawn to it. So I like went over to him and he did a, a little sound session for me. And like, I felt like I was floating and I was just literally there present, receiving what was happening. Um, and I was just like, I need a bowl. So <laughs> I currently am working at Smile um, and I offer therapy there for my clients. And I um, asked my supervisor and I was like, you know, I think I want to, I was already doing yoga for my kids. Um, mm-hmm. I had went through a trauma-informed yoga program. And I was like, I want to bring sound healing into the practice. I want to see what that looks like for them. Um, so they brought me my first bowl. Um, they invested in me. And uh, I started doing it with my clients in the session. And, you know, some of them were just like, Miss China, what is you doing with this bowl? <laughs> Trying to understand the concept of it. Um, and so I started offering it for my clients there. COVID happened. And I felt inclined to offer it for community. So I started doing it every morning um, live for uh, people and it literally com- developed this sound healing tribe of people. And we just kind of had like small, like group sessions every morning, just discussing, cause you know, it was a lot that was happening 
in the beginning of COVID uh, for everybody, you know, just a lot of emotions and feelings to be released and talked about. Um, and I just saw the power of what that looked like and allowing people to be present and to kind of have this foreign thing that we weren't used to um, be an instrument in their healing journey. So it kind of just happened from there. And then I was like, okay, this is a thing for me. And so I started buying my own bowls and we started doing sound healing in the park and I started um, buying books to, you know, I kind of understand more of the concept um, and the the research behind sound and how that was able to be helpful and how I can and in, um, integrate that with the therapy that I was doing, um, you know, in the office. Sorry, that was like a mouthful. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it was wonderful because I think there's so many elements in there of that we we all kind of have this journey to find healing and to find things that help. And I, I relate to it in terms of like the therapist journey and hearing you talk about the, the counseling program as like, it's your own therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Becoming a therapist becomes your own therapy in a lot of ways. And it's something I talk to my students about all the time that these, these years of training to be a therapist yes. are, <laughs> are very much about you. They're about you yeah. understanding your own reactions, your own responses and, and being um, able to be present for others in that way, but then also taking that and moving into finding sound and the, the impact of it on others and the importance of it and the value of it and really finding that niche that works and yeah. fits, with, fits with your mindset. Um, it sounds like you've done, uh, you've done some reading up on it. Are there any that you're aware of? Are there, if someone is out there and they're a therapist, maybe me, um, <laughs> If they wanted to get trained in it, is there an option for that or is there a yes. good option for that? There are plenty of trainings that you can look into. Um, one of the sound healers that I'm actually connected to here in Richmond, she um, actually sent me some of the trainings that she's went through. Um, some of them are online. Um, one of my yoga instructors um, that I went through my training, she went to India and received some of her training there. Um, and I'm actually traveling to Bali uh, in a few days. And I'm hoping to, you know, kind of go through like Thailand and India and hopefully be able to get some training through some of the shamans and some of the um, yogis that they have out there. But there are plenty of trainings. I would definitely say, you know, do your research when looking up the trainings and making sure that it's legit and, you know, it tailors to exactly what it is that you're looking for. Because some people are just looking um, to understand um, how sound him healing could be just be beneficial. Some people want to know actually the history behind it and how to, you know, play the bowls for themselves. So, you know, just making sure that it tailors to specifically what you're looking for. Yeah, no, that's helpful. I think that it's, it is definitely something I would look into learning more about. It's partly why I was excited to do this today because I am really interested in it. Um, and it leads me to another question, which I realize that neither of us are music therapists, which music yes. therapy is another option. Um, and I know that in my own practice and in my own life, I have found the impact of music specifically um, with lyrics and, and you know, the, the structure of the song has been valuable in terms of eliciting emotional response and tapping into that um, part of ourselves that is kind of connected to uh, to music, but how, what do you see as maybe what sets sound healing apart from that? It's, it makes it different than just like, I'm not going to say just because that's diminishing <laughs> than listening to a song in session. Um, I would say that for what I know of music therapy, so correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody's out there, please, um, you know, <laughs> I'm just our experts in music therapy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and when it comes to music therapy, I believe, you know, the practitioners, they uh, counselors, they use more of like the composition. And like you said, like the lyrics and specific songs to reach a desired outcome, you know, for whatever it is that the, the client could per, uh, possibly be going through at that moment. Uh, when it comes to sound healing, I personally, it's more like an energetic um, type of um, experience. It's more conscious level. It's more of a deep um, meditative, relaxed um, experience um, and more of a, I know that we're going to get into this later, but some of the benefits, you know, when it comes to like sound healing is like lowering your stress. Um, it can help for clients who um, may have cancer. Um, it can help with mood levels and like all those different things. And so I think when it comes to music therapy, it also is for clients who have a hard time expressing themselves, maybe just by talking. 
And, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe the music is just another way to kind of help them um, to uh, connect to whatever emotions or whatever it is that they need to say that they can't possibly do Mm -hmm. on their own. So, you know, I'm not necessarily sure, but I think (laughs) that could be what it is. Yeah, no, I think too that the the music can be a little more cognitive to your point. Like yeah. there you're 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 engaging your mind in um structure of the the lyric and structure of yeah. the composition. That's the word I was looking for earlier yeah. that you had. Um whereas from what I've read about the research on sound healing, it actually the vibration and the sustained yeah. vibration of a sound of just a tone mm-hmm. and the, what you were talking about, the beta waves actually like adjusts our electrical field, our, like our yeah. brain waves, our, our bodies are, are at a cellular level. It's like really impacting, um, our bodies in a physical yes. way. And so maybe I'm just hypothesizing here. I'm making this up. Maybe <laughs> we're here together. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, th- music therapy is cognitive. It, it does engage emotions, but maybe yeah. sound healing is a little bit more of a, a deeper, less cognitive, more bio- biology based engagement of healing definitely because it from some of the research it definitely um speaks to connecting like you said with the cell on us technically connecting with us on a cellular level and a lot of the different bowls connect with you um through like your different chakras so they do have different tones so um each bowl is tailored to that so that that definitely can make a difference yeah, that's really interesting. So I, I do want to get into kind of what a sound healing session might look like for someone. I know that later you're going to do uh, a meditation for us, but I'm wondering if you could just for people who are wondering what to expect, um, and then we can maybe get into benefits. Okay, so um, for my particular sound session, I like to absolutely create the atmosphere for, you know, everyone that's walking into it, because I know that it can be something that is foreign and something that we are just kind of walking into. So I like it to be like a nice, like, you know, walk in the park, you know, if, if I can. Um, so if I can give you a visual of what it looks like, um, for my sound healing sessions, I do have lots of candles. Um, and, um, there are mats, there's comforters, there are blankets, because I will be honest, my first sound heal like session where I was actually like laying down, I fell asleep. And <laughs> the practitioner was like, um, you got to get up. Like, <laughs> it's over. Um, so it definitely happens. People do fall asleep doing sound healing sessions. Um, so it definitely, like I said, I, I like to have like dim lights, depending on where we are. Like if I'm having a session in home or like in a studio, um, the lights are dimmed. We do have um, some music going. I like to have music that are also speaking to like frequencies. I don't want to have anything too loud. Beautiful chorus is one of the um, um groups that I love to go to, um, because they use their tones, their music, their voices, um, as a way of meditation. So if you're ever looking for something kind of trying to walk into that, they're beautiful go-to. Um, so I use them, um, I sometimes have tea or like water and things, you know, just to kind of, you know, feel comfortable and where you are, we do some breath work. Um, sometimes in our sessions, we, um, depending on the session that you book, um, we might do some intentional writing. Um, which was just, you know, some journaling, depending on where you are, just some things that we want to release or some things that we want to call into ourselves, um, some things that we want to bring our attention to, um, you know, in the beginning. And then at the end, a lot of people do have what I like to call downloads, Um, you know, sometimes some things that come up for you within the sound session. So sometimes it can be very blissful. Some people can be very comfortable within the sound session and it can come um, back to being present feeling very like relaxed and calm, just like, wow, like I've never felt like that within my own body. Some people can be like, okay, it made me uncomfortable. I was crying. There were some things that I didn't know, but that, that, and I'm just like, well, don't run from the uncomfort, right? Don't run for the discomfort. Don't run from it because a lot of times discomfort is trying to show us something. It's trying to, our body is trying to tell us something that we need to pay attention to. Um, So, you know, um, sometimes within my sessions, it's just my bowls. Sometimes I'm also like as a songstress. So sometimes I also use my voice and incorporate some music as well. Um, So it really all depends. Um, You know, sometimes I have individual sessions. Sometimes I'll hold group sessions. So it all, you know, kind of all depends on what it uh, it'll be specifically tailored to. It's exciting to think about the chance to engage in something that isn't that has both linguistic layers of journaling and, and having engaging that part of you. But then 
putting putting barriers down to then be open to the the healing that comes through the the tones and the sound and and the healing that comes from that which is really really valuable it's making yeah. me want to do a session with you china <laughs> <laughs> It's also, it's something maybe, I don't know if you know this, um, I, I could be asking questions neither of us know the answer to, but I'm wondering how, if there's been any research on it used with trauma specifically, because one of the things, I'm, I'm a trauma specialist, and one of the things yes. I know is that trauma is stored in our bodies, our it's bodies, stored in our yeah. cells, it's stored, and it is sometimes stored in a way that does not have access to language. And so, you know, sometimes when people are triggered with or activate their trauma, they are they kind of lose the ability to speak clearly. Um, yeah. So it seems like sound healing would be really a, a good stepping into point for people trying to work on their trauma or, or additional service to getting traditional therapy. Absolutely. I definitely believe so. And I've been able to use that with some of my clients who have um, experienced it. And I also, like, just like I said, I, I've done um, trauma-informed yoga and so a lot of that is about the language that we use with our clients within our sessions, you know, um, allowing them to understand that they're giving themselves permission to be present within their bodies. And, you know, just like, you know, even with whatever you always, you know, ask for consent before you help with like modifications and, you know, and different things like that. Um, so I think that sound healing, I haven't done a lot of research when it comes to trauma, but just all the things that you highlighted definitely speak to a lot of the benefits that come from sound healing that I think could, you know, be very vital. Yeah. So here's a maybe silly question. Um, okay. do, people ever, do people ever participate? Like when you're doing a sound healing session, do they sing or do they play a musical instrument or do they do any, or are they kind of there to just relax and engage and receive? Yeah. Um, normally people are just there to receive. I've had um, like when we've done, when we've done some like community um, outreach type of sessions, people will bring their kids. So the kids are like, oh, you know, oh my God, can I please touch your bowls? <laughs> so I'll have like, you know, some kids come up and do some of the bowls. Um, but no, singing, I don't think anyone, because I don't even think people really expect me to start singing. So <laughs> uh, when it happens, I think they're just kind of like just allowing it to happen. They're just like, okay, that's cool. We're here, you know, we're having it. Uh, but yeah, no, no one's really um, participated um, outside of like the kids who definitely just want to see what the bowls can do. Yeah. Excellent. So that, that brings me to one of my last questions, which is what, what are the benefits? Like, what have you seen? Do you have examples of people who have experienced anything positive um, within the limits of confidentiality, of course, or, yeah, yeah. or what are the benefits that have been demonstrated from this approach? Um, I can, I'll definitely I'll use my mother. I'm pretty sure she won't mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my mom who um, <clears throat> has challenges with sleeping um, I started doing sound healing with her um, as a way to kind of like help see how that like soothes her so that she can be able to get to sleep and it puts her out, you know, um, she's, she's, she's knocked out for the night because um, she'll have, she'll be able to get to sleep, but it's hard for her to stay to sleep. So sound healing has definitely helped her in a way to be able to go to sleep and to be able to sleep throughout the night. So I've been able to see that like in front of my face. Um, and that's also one of the benefits that they absolutely said that, um, can is comes from sound healing. Um, I've seen it help um, individuals who um, suffer from anxiety, um, depression, um, PTSD. Um, I know that it is for um, for lowering um, cholesterol, um, blood pressure. Um, there's so many different things, honestly, um, and there are so many studies that are still happening on like all the different benefits that can come from sound healing. But those are definitely some of the things that I've seen where it's been really constant and also like pain reduction. That is also something that I've seen um, for individuals who have like um, like the sciatic nerve in their back. Um, I've seen that or like um, arthritis. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> so some of the pain that they have. Um, so I've definitely been able to see some of those things firsthand. Yeah, it's really exciting. I feel like the and this is a side note maybe, but I feel like this, our field of healing has really just started to fully understand how important our whole body is in our mental health Absolutely. and how engaging in our five senses, whether it's sound, sound waves, connecting our brain 
um, actually, we don't have to connect our brain. It's pretty right. much embedded in our system. <laughs> <laughs> but tapping into the power of our brain waves, yeah. and whether it's with light or sound, um, it, it's just an amazing, it has amazing healing powers. Yeah. And it really, just listening to your description of all of the things that sound healing can affect, it reminds me that there's not really a big difference between physical and emotional pain. It's yeah. more of a, it's more of a distinction we make as human beings, our body experiences pain as physical as in our body, whether it's physical or emotional, it's yeah. still just pain. It's still gonna, yeah. And when you heal the, when you heal the emotional pain, sometimes the physical pain is healed. And when you heal the physical pain, sometimes the emotional pain is healed because they're all the same thing. Connected. Yes. All <laughs> connected. And honestly, that kind of brings me to what I would like that to look like for myself. Like, you know, once I'm, you know, you know, the training that we have to go to to finally get licensed. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> when I'm finally licensed my practice, I want to be able to incorporate like all of the things. So sound healing, yoga, Reiki, you know, within the talk therapy, because sometimes Clients may need that before a session. They might need something like that after a session. You know, uh, we know that coming into session, sometimes they can leave feeling pretty heavy. We might've talked about some, some heavy stuff that day. And to be able to go and be able to move those things, you know, out of your body and through your body, you know, um, is powerful, you know? And I think that all of these different modalities, because ultimately that's what it is, different modalities, just like you said, are put into place for the healing process. Like it's an expansion of it. It's not replacing anything. It's just an expansion and something that can, you know, also be used just like also. <laughs> Absolutely. And also yeah. it's like um, sometimes we need the, the, the direct body healing to lead to the language and sometimes yeah. we need language to lead to the direct body. Yes. It's all whole. I, you said this in the beginning and I'm just going to reiterate it. It's a holistic approach. It's, it's yeah. a, it's a looking at the whole self and yes. recognizing that all these things impact our whole self. Yes. Um, even if they seem like something people that outside the realm of what we would consider kind of average or, yeah. or basically just what we've thought we knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the part. <laughs> so do you recommend this practice for everyone? Is there something that if someone was interested, you would recommend they start with? Um, I definitely recommend it for everyone. Um, you know, I think that, you know, everything is not for everyone. So this might not be everybody's thing. Um, you know, like for me personally, when I first started do, like trying to um, find what worked for me within meditation, guided meditation wasn't really my thing. Um, mm -hmm. Like on a, like a recorded, like guided meditation, it had to be like something that was like in person. So sound healing, you know, it might be good for some people in person, like online for your first session, I would not recommend um, because I, it's not the same experience. Like it's cool, but it's just not the same thing as being in person, but I definitely recommend it for everyone to at least give it a try. You know, you never know until you try it. Um, and there's, you know, plenty of places that you can see it. There's a lot of sound pra um, healing practitioners that are on social media that you can find on YouTube. There's a gentleman that all you got to do is type in sound healing. And he's the first person that comes up and he has a three hour sound bath. And when I struggle with going to sleep sometime, I just put him on it and I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I, yeah, it's it's making me remember that I wanted to say earlier the sleeping issue. I think this sounds so right on track with helping yes. people sleep. It's the, and keeping you asleep because it yes. fits with those your brain waves when you're sleeping are at, when they're out of whack. You wake up, you wake up. But if you can mm -hmm. kind of titrate your brain waves as you're falling asleep, it just seems like the best possible healthiest um, option to improve sleep, which everybody listening probably needs. Yes. <laughs> So I, I have looked up a book. Um, it's called sound bath, uh, okay. by Sarah Oster. I don't know. I have that book. You do. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm going to read it. I okay. bought it. I'm reading it. Um, <laughs> do you have any other recommendations for things people could read? Or I know you just recommended some YouTube, uh, some like online stuff, you know, Spotify is my, uh, my favorite. Um, so, um, I know that they have different, um, playlists and things that are related to sound healing, but that book, the sound bath, um, that's the only book that I have, um, related to sound healing. Um, and it's great. And it's very, she's straight to the point, not using a bunch of big words that don't make sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it, yeah, it's very plain. I think that um, people would definitely, if that's something that they wanted to learn a lot to learn more about, that that would be a good um, book to start. Okay, perfect. Well, then I would love to just kind of hand it over to you and okay. allow you to lead us 
and I've been looking forward to this this morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to back up a little bit. So I'm going to welcome you into the space. We're going to take like three deep breaths together, you know, just to kind of get it adjusted on the chime. We're going to take a deep inhale in. Inhale. Hold your breath here. Exhale. Inhale. Hold your breath. Exhale. And on this last deep breath, I want you to carry your breath from the pits of your stomach all the way up to your chest, lifting your shoulders up to your ears. And as you exhale, allowing them to roll backwards. Inhale. Hold your breath. Exhale. I always like to say that as we start, you can have your palms facing up for anything that you would like to receive, anything that you would like to call into yourself. We're going to have our palms facing up, palms facing down. And there, if you need some grounding, if you haven't quite been feeling yourself lately, you just need some stability within yourself, you're going to have your palms facing down towards the ground. Now I want you to take a moment and bring your palms to your chest. Right here, right now, I invite you to connect to your heart chakra. If there's any emotions, any thoughts, any feelings that you need to address, if there's anything that you need to release, if there's anything that you want to call in more love, anything that you need to let go of, just take this moment to connect with yourself. This is a moment for you to be intentional about what it is that you would like to do within this practice. Let's take this moment. And as we begin, I just want to remind you that the goal is not to still our mind or quiet our mind. The goal is just to be here. And any thoughts that come by, we just allow ourselves to be curious of them. No judgment, no shame. Just curious.
I invite you back to the present moment, giving yourself and your body permission to come back to the right now. And as you orient yourself back into the space, you can wiggle your toes, gently wiggle your fingers, or whatever feels good to you. And we're gonna take a deep breath in on the count of the chime. Breathe in. And exhale. And as you release, I want you to give yourself a big hug because it feels good. And because you showed up for yourself today. Thank you. <sighs> that was wonderful, China. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really was able to, even, even over the internet, feel the power of that that sound. So thank you so much for that today. I'm sure that after hearing that and experiencing that, there are going to be a lot of people that would love to get in contact with you and figure out, you know, just learn more about what you do. Um, so maybe you could tell people how they can get in touch with you. Okay. Awesome. Um, social media, of course. Um, so Instagram, China T era, um, my Instagram can take you pretty much anywhere, but I have an Instagram page. I also have a YouTube channel where I'll also be um, doing some sound healing sessions there and on um, my website, www.preservingpeace.org. You can book a session there. Um, you can also follow up for like any updates I'll be doing for like any of the events or, you know, speaking engagements that I'll be doing um, regarding like sound or just anything regarding holistic healing. Excellent. That's a lot of ways people can get in contact. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating in this conversation today. It has been wonderful. I have learned a lot and I'm sure everyone else has learned a lot as well. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Mary. It was a pleasure seeing you again. Thank you all for having me. Absolutely. And thank you all for watching this Care for Creatives community conversation. To learn more about the Creative Affairs Office and Care for Creatives, visit creativeaffairsdc.com. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you to Dr. Mary and China for participating in our Care for Creatives community conversation. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. Hopefully you enjoyed that sound healing session. Visit us over at creativeaffairsdc.com to stay up to date on all things Care for Creatives. Until next time, have a great day. In closing, here are a few helpful resources. The Care for Creatives program, Pay What You Can Counseling. Learn more at creativeaffairsdc.com. Preserving Peace. Learn more at preservingpeace.org. Beautiful Chorus. Listen to their songs at www.beautifulchorus.com. Visit YouTube and type in Sound Healing to explore videos. Sound Bath, transform your world through listening by Sarah Oster.